The ink on the Matt Boldy extension is dry, and now it's time to figure out what comes next. We take a look at some of the other off-season objectives for the Minnesota Wilds and the Matt Boldy contract itself today on Locked on Wilds. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Just a reminder, you can find Locked On Wild on your favorite podcast platforms absolutely free of charge. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we dive into the Matt Boldy contract extension. We will look at the numbers over the duration of the deal, some of what has gone into this extension for Boldy and the Wild. And most importantly, we'll look at what it means for some key decisions coming up for the Wild in the offseason. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And uh, this one caught us uh, yesterday after we had already recorded the uh, standard Monday episode. So today is really the big breakdown of the dominoes in the Matt Boldy contract extension. Pretty easy math, which I'm super appreciative of. Seven years, seven million per, and it will keep Boldy with the Minnesota Wild all the way through the uh, end of the 2029-2030 season, which is just a just a bizarre number uh, in and of itself. But some of the other things that go into this, he does have a uh, limited no trade clause in the final two years of the deal. So he will have the opportunities to submit a list of teams that uh, he does not want to get traded to in those final two years should that uh, need arise. And it also signifies that Matt Boldy has uh, been put into that next wave of wild players uh, going past this current core. If you look at it, these are the players that are signed past the um, even the 2024 2025 season there are few and far in between uh, it's Kirill Kaprizov who signed past 2025 2026 Jewel Erickson Eck who signed through the 2028 2029 season it's Matt Boldy who signed through 2029 2030 Jared Spurgeon, who signed through the end of 2026, 2027, and Jonas Brodeen, who has signed through the end of 2027, 2028. So you are sitting right now with five players that make up this next core. And that's not to say there aren't other players that are going to be part of it, because of course there will be. It's just at this time, those are the guys that the Wild have wanted to try to lock in and keep around so that those decisions don't need to be made. And we had speculated as to whether or not uh, Boldy would sign a shorter term contract to um, give him an opportunity, maybe when he hits 25, to go back on the free agent market. But ultimately, the Wilds, Love what Matt Boldy brings to the ice. And Matt Boldy is obviously super comfortable being here in Minnesota. And so both teams, both the uh, the team and the players said, why not? Let's uh, let's line it up and let's uh, let's get this thing done. Now, Boldy being 21 years old right now, he still is going to have a chance to get back on the free agent market when he turns 28. So he obviously is still going to be able to get a, uh, a sizable contract, either in an extension with the Minnesota Wilds or on the free agent market as well. So this isn't a situation that is hurting Boldy any. Um, and, and honestly, if you look at the production, the Wild obviously getting a uh, 
they're getting a deal on the back end because according to the athletic Matt Boldy's market value right now, right now is $7 million per season for the wilds. The hope is that Boldy will continue to elevate his game and will be that uh, number two option on this team in the next handful of years, depending on what happens with Matt Zuccarello. And I know this season, the numbers have been up and down. He's been uh, a little more cold here recently than, uh, than he was earlier in the season, but you're, you're dealing with a 21 year old player in his second season in the NHL. And for all of the good that we saw last year, with what he was able to do, uh, should have probably been, had he played a full season, should have been a Calder finalist, if not the Calder Trophy winner. There is a little bit of a adjustment period for a guy like Matt Boldy as the league figures out some of his tendencies and what he does on a night-in and night-out basis. And the other thing I think that plays into it, too, is he's not – the he's not the fastest skater there is, but he is an above average playmaker. His his puck instincts are up there amongst some of the best to do it in the NHL right now. He obviously is a uh, tremendous playmaker himself. And so those are the kinds of things that you want to build a team around. I no idea what the line combinations look like three or four years from now, but it's very likely that you'll be looking at the guy who is on the opposite end of Kirill Kaprizov as that uh, top line forward. And so what he brings to counter Kirill's speed and playmaking ability himself is going to create, when these two are, are operating at their, uh, their peak, it's going to create a nightmare for defenses. We know what has been kind of the straw that stirs the drink for a Matt Boldy line. It's been having a player on the outside that has a speed element that he just doesn't bring to the table to allow them to get to a spot and for him to be able to deliver the puck to that spot and to uh, to be able to set up teammates for you know a depth level playmaking ability. That's that's the Matt Boldy experience in a nutshell right there. And so obviously this is going to be a contract that works out very well for the Minnesota Wild. It's very it's very reminiscent of what happened with uh Jewel Erickson Eck. You, know, you look at the contract extension that Erickson Eck signed and 5.25 million at the time that he signed it seemed like maybe it was a little rich. Maybe it was a little bit too steep of a number right off the bat. But look at what Jewel Erickson Eck has done over the last couple of years. He has continued to increase his offensive production. And for a third consecutive season, he's on pace to have a career year offensively. That is where the Wild are hoping that Matt Boldy can get to, to where he starts to stack higher production together. His numbers as the season goes, I'm sure will will get better to where then based on the number of games, it's going to end up being a career year for him. And then the Wild will want him to exceed that next year and the year after and the year after and the year after. So it it makes a lot of sense for the Wild on the back end of this contract because you're going to, if Boldy meets his threshold and he continues his progression, you're going to get some real bargain seasons on the back end of this deal. Not to say it's not a bargain now, because as I said, his market value, according to The Athletic, is right at $7 million right now. So you're already getting a huge bargain uh, even before he has signed the extension. So at worst, next year, he's right at market value. And then at that point, his value starts to elevate and you say, yeah, we, uh, we did some really good things with this extension. So 
I love the deal. I think Matt Boldy's going to be a uh, really important part of this organization, which was never really in doubt. That was never going to, that's not breaking any news, but it, I'm glad that this got done because this was one of the dominoes in the off season that was going to need to be addressed. And so this one is off the board. And now what else ends up being done is the big question mark, but those are all complementary pieces. Matt Boldy is the type of player that you, uh, you want to build as part of that core. And then you fill in with complementary players after that. So we will continue today's episode by taking a look at some of the other guys that are going to be restricted or unrestricted free agents at the end of the season and where they fall into, should they be prioritized or are you able to get that sort of production from those guys from somebody else in the organization? We'll, we'll discuss all of that as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, plus stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From the NFL playoffs, to college basketball, to the NBA, to the NHL, they've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. They are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thanks for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out the Locked on NHL Prospects show, which will give you a full look at the biggest names heading into the 2023 NHL draft, plus a look at organizational prospect rankings too. Locked on NHL Prospects is available on all of your favorite podcast platforms, absolutely free of charge. So now that the Matt Boldy contract is taken care of, who else is going to be in line for uh, a contract extension or a new contract? from the wild here in the off season. It is quite the list. It includes Ryan Reeves, Freddie Goudreau, both unrestricted free agents. Uh, also restricted free agents include the likes of Sam Steele, Brandon Duhame, Mason Shaw, Kalen Addison, and Philip Gustafson. Those are the main guys on the um, NHL roster, but then you've got guys down in uh, Iowa, such as Damian Giroux, uh, Mitchell Chafee, Nick Sweeney, Brandon Baddock, Joe Hicketts, Dakota Mermis, Andre Schuster, Hunter Jones, and Zane McIntyre. Now, those guys down at the Iowa level, not that they're not important, but we're obviously focusing on the NHL level players. And uh, so we'll just go down the list and kind of go through which ones should be prioritized and which should not. I think it's safe to say Definitively, without a doubt, a hundred percent, no doubt that the Matt Boldy extension has officially signaled the end of the line for Matt Dumba with the Minnesota Wild. We have discussed this quite a bit, and this is not a new revelation. I think this is just the final pen to paper that makes it um, essentially guaranteed that the Wild just do not have the cap space to be able to retain him, considering the other players that they are going to need to try to fit in and the fact that they have players that will be available to fill that spot. And I found it interesting as well in um, just saw some numbers from, I believe it was, it was Jay Fresh on Twitter that shared it. And I think it was from moneypuck.com. Defensive pairings with the lowest expected goals allowed, uh, expected goals against in the NHL. 
The two pairings for the Minnesota Wild that do not include Matt Dumba are the two that made the list. And the, the part of the list that was shown was the top 20 in the entirety of the NHL. And at 18, it was Jared Spurgeon and Jake Middleton. And I think at 20, it was John Merrill and Kalen Addison. So those two lines are among the top 20 in the NHL in expected goals against while they're out on the ice. Jonas Brodeen and Matt Dumba are not on, at least in the top 20. Didn't see the rest of the list, so it's possible that they're just a little further down. But it's just, it, it just has reached the natural ending point for the Matt Dumba and Minnesota Wild chapter of his NHL career. He will get the opportunity to go to some contender. It won't be for six mil. He'll get the chance to go to some contender somewhere and play for a Stanley Cup, but it just it's not something that the Wild are going to be able to get done for that number, and especially considering the other guys that are on the list. You already have a defenseman that is on this list that will need to have a new deal done himself, that being Kalen Addison. And by a million times, Addison is a bigger priority than Matt Dumba. I wouldn't even assign a priority code to Matt Dumba at this point. It's just, it's done. It's time to move on and prioritize other things. So here are the players, and not to say, like, for instance, uh, this was discussed the other day. I would not be opposed to bringing Ryan Reeves back with what he's done for this team. I think he's been a great addition to what this team has done since he was acquired. It's just the names that need to be prioritized by this team. I would say... Sam Steele, I would say Brandon Duhame, and we'll talk more about this um, a little bit later. I would say Kalen Addison, and I would say Philip Gustafson. I think need to be the guys that uh, are prioritized here. With Philip Gustafson, you have what appears to be a budding starting caliber NHL goalie that we have seen just put together almost a three-month stretch of very, very good hockey. And so even if Marc-Andre Fleury is back next year, if you can get Philip Gustafson signed for long-term, and at this point in his career, he may value some stability and a long-term type commitment with the team. If you can get Philip Gustafson locked in, to some type of deal with the Wild. It takes every ounce of pressure off of Jesper Volstead to come up before he is ready. Now, his numbers in Iowa have been very, very good and much better here over the, uh, the last month plus. So if you were to put those two together as a goalie tandem, you're talking about some pretty good things. So I think of that grouping, I would put Philip Gustafson number one. I'd put Kalen Addison number two because he has shown some real poise on the power play. He's shown some better poise defensively recently. And he just has all the makeup of somebody that could be part of that next group of wild defensemen. Uh, that they're going to need to replace as these guys get older and as contracts come off the books. So Kalen Addison is number two for me. Beyond that, I am putting Brandon Duhame at three because of what we're going to talk about to finish the show. I would like to see Sam Steele re retained as well because of what he has been able to do with that top line. He he has been a great contributor to that top line. Um, and so I, I think he would be, especially at 24, I think he'd be worth retaining and keeping around for this team. Now, 
beyond that, I mean, Mason Shaw, obviously, the Wild like what he brings to the table, and I think he can be a very effective um, bottom six guy. But compared to those other guys, I put them all first because of what they bring to the table. Not to say that they won't get a deal done with Mason Shaw. It's, it wouldn't shock me if they do. But I put all those other guys first, which just means that the writing's on the wall for the writing's on the wall for Matt Dumba, and the writing for on the wall may honestly also be for Freddie Goudreau. I know in the uh, the Joe Smith Athletic article uh, talking about the uh, the Boldy extension, the number that uh, that he came up with that the Wild have after the Boldy extension is $9 million in cap space for Philip Gustafson, Kalen Addison, Sam Steele, Brandon Duhame, and Mason Shaw. Mentions that Freddie Goudreau and Ryan Reeves are UFAs along with Matt Dumba. And then says you'd think that Gustafson, Goudreau, and Addison are priorities. Freddie Goudreau's had a great year um, on pace for 20 goals this season. And obviously is a player that I think Dean Everson likes. That's that's pretty easy to identify. But you've got guys in the NA, in the AHL on entry level contracts, Sammy Walker, that have shown the ability to perform at the NHL level. And so at some point, you're just going to at some point you are going to just have to fill spots for those guys. And so we will finish today's episode by looking at a couple of interesting scenarios in which the Wild may try to free up other roster spots uh, to plug in players from Iowa that are as close to NHL ready as they're going to be. And so we'll, uh, we'll continue the conversation on today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 because it simplifies your vitamin and supplement routine. With just one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. And it is lifestyle-friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take great care of yourself. And it is proven effective. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wilds. Once again, thanks for making Lockdown Wilds your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out the Lockdown NHL podcast as we get closer and closer to the All-Star Game. Find out everything going on throughout the National Hockey League at Lockdown NHL, which is free and available on your favorite podcast platforms. This Jordan Greenway situation is really interesting for me and uh, if you missed what that was um the athletic reporting that remember when jordan greenway was unavailable uh for the last game in which the wild went uh, 11 forward seven defensemen yeah it turns out he wasn't sick he according to joe smith and he cites it right in his article The Athletic reported last week that Greenway wasn't really sick on January 8th when he was a late scratch in a 3-0 loss to the Blues. Greenway showed up significantly after the 4 p.m. meeting, and they held him out, which put the team in a bind as they had to go with 11 forwards and 7 defensemen. He also missed a meeting earlier this season 
The Wild didn't fine or suspend Greenway, who has been in the lineup ever since. But Bill Guerin is a no-nonsense guy, and you don't have to be an insider to realize Greenway has put himself on thin ice. Couple that with Greenway's production, two goals in 25 games, and you could see why it might be a consideration for the Wild to move on from Greenway and his $3 million average annual value through 2024-2025. Garen could probably sign Brandon Duhame for about half of that and put him on the line with Eric Sinek and Marcus Foligno. I've been campaigning for that for a while uh, because I just, I think at this point, as nice as it is to have that um, Greenway, Felino, Erickson Eck line, Greenway just doesn't seem to really know how to use what he has. Furthermore, Brandon Duhame hits harder than Jordan Greenway at substantially smaller size and seems to be a guy that the Wild really play better with in the lineup. Not to say that they don't without Greenway, but I think this is another instance in which the Wild can get creative with some of their roster uh, in order to help squeeze some of these signings in as well. We saw Brandon Duhame, Marcus Foligno, and Jewel Erickson Eck put together earlier in the season when Jordan Greenway was not quite returned from his injury. Actually, now that I think about it, that was when he had the setback. Point being, we saw those three play together, and that line did what the grief line has done. So, yes, those three parts together are a, a force defensively. But I think you can bottle what Greenway does in Brandon Duhame. And so you're saving money there by creating a spot for Brandon Duhame. And then by extension, you're creating a spot for somebody else to fill in Duhame's spot lower in the lineup. I think also Sammy Walker is going to take a spot from somebody, whether it be Freddie Goudreau, whether it be Ryan Reeves, whether it be somebody else that we have not anticipated as of yet. But I look at it that, yes, Freddie Goudreau has been, he's been good this year. He, as just as we said, has he's on pace for 20 goals this year, which would be a career high, which is what he had last year. But I wonder if you, if you're not going to put... Ryan Hartman on the top line, if you're going to let Sam Steele continue to roll with that opportunity, if you pick one or the other, either Freddie Goudreau or Ryan Hartman, and let them center Matt Boldy's line with Sammy Walker, so then again, you're creating another spot that didn't necessarily appear appear to be there but this is this is the bill garen experience in a nutshell is that he is going to he's going to have a couple of things in mind that we didn't necessarily expect to create some roster spots what this team does at the trade deadline is going to be fascinating we saw the reports recently that kind of put a dam- uh, tried to dampen a little bit the notion that this team will just acquire a rental. And I think that specific wording is also a um, not an accident. That if the Wild maybe have an opportunity to acquire somebody who is under term, maybe they go that route too. But the main thing is that Bill Guerin, he is putting together this next core of players and players are going to either be in or they're going to be out. And he's not going to, he's not going to dilly dally and waste his time. If a player just does not fit in what this team is trying to do as they go forward, 
then that roster spot's just going to go to somebody else. So this this kind of stuff is fascinating. The ripple effect that a contract extension can have on what this team looks like in two, three, five years. It's all ripples that are connected. And what Bill Guerin does with it is going to be what we get the opportunity to see play out over the uh, next couple of months. That will do it for today's episode of Locked on Wilds. So now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you catch our pregame preview of tonight's matchup against the Washington Capitals coming out uh, around noon here today. So make sure to check that out by following Locked on Wild on all of your favorite podcast platforms. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on all of your favorite platforms you listen to podcasts on, including Amazon Music. You can also find us on social media, such as TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. We are on it. Make sure you follow along as we keep you up to date with all things Minnesota Wild as we navigate through the rest of the season. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.